previously on 30 in 30. Charlotte, well, it was a time. We started off the day heading to the Charlotte airport and then remained at the Charlotte airport because our flight got delayed twice. In addition, I realized that I had made an egregious error. I had lost the wildflower outfit. He's gonna kill me. And potentially even worse, I had lost the Jackson DeVille Speedo costume. The costume that I was going to wear in Jacksonville if we raised $100,000. And at this point, we were over double our original goal. I had no costume, no wildflower, and just sadness. We're sitting here at the Charlotte airport. Our flight has been delayed twice. It kind of sucks. We lost the Jackson DeVille costume. But freaking Ryan Trahan, one of the guys who inspired this trip, like just doing the 30 day thing. He just donated five thousand dollars, and I donated five grand to Feeding America last year when he was doing it. Tom Grassi with a five thousand dollar donation. The Grassi Posse supports us. Thank you so much, Tom. And now Trey Head, who like we don't know each other, but such a kind, good guy. This is so surreal, man. So Ryan, appreciate you, buddy. After the delays, we finally made it onto our flight. Landed in Jacksonville, in which I had to do a quick phone interview with Jaguars today with Mike Dempsey. Had to do that in the Uber. Tight schedule. I need a publicist. That's what I said at the beginning of this trip. But no, I'm gonna do it all. We immediately headed over to the stadium. Did an interview with local media outside and then headed in. Now, before I even stepped in, it was mentioned on the radio interview that the Jaguar stadium needed to be renovated. In fact, renovation plans were unveiled earlier this month before we arrived. And the stadium, which opened in 1995, you could see that simple things just needed to be updated. Wider concourses, escalators, and definitely some shade from the brutal Floridian sun. All these things and a whole lot more are gonna be addressed in the renovations that will be done in the coming years. But it goes beyond that. Everyone knows that the Jaguars play overseas a lot. In fact, they're playing in back-to-back -back weeks in London this season. And over the years, this has led to speculation that the team might even move to London, leaving Jacksonville behind. But if there was one thing that was made very clear after this tour, it was that the Jaguars are staying and investing in Jacksonville. The Jags owner, Shad Khan, wants to turn the stadium and surrounding area into a destination, not just for football, but for music and other events. He wants to connect the east to downtown in an effort to reflect Jacksonville's growing reputation because Jacksonville is a city on the rise. And so even though the renovations weren't done for our visit, there were things that made this stadium unique. Whether it was the cabanas for 20 or 50 people or even pools that you could stay in while watching a football game. It was these little details that just made Jacksonville stand out. They even have an area in the back of the end zone that on game day is set with tables and fans can watch the game right from there. And it was during this tour that we even met a special someone, the legend himself, Jackson DeVille. Legend. Not wanting to startle him because apparently he sleeps out here, I had a chance to speak with Jackson, whose stoic presence really impacted me. After knighting me and throwing me a pass, it was obvious to see why he was so beloved by this fan base. Also, he had some pretty cool dance moves, and we were both missing a Speedo. It's a touchy subject. Now, of course, I couldn't talk about the future of the Jaguars without mentioning one person in particular, a man who has played a significant role in the Jaguars' rise, and that is Trevor Lawrence. Not only has he reinvigorated the franchise, but he has quickly become a fan favorite. And after a successful sophomore season that saw the Jags not only make the playoffs, but win a playoff game in miraculous fashion, unless you're a Chargers fan, Lawrence penned a letter to the city of Jacksonville that February and reflected on the fact that even after a 27-0 deficit, none of the fans were leaving during that Chargers game. And there it is, 
Regardless of tough times, the fans never abandon this team. And this team is not abandoning them. This was obvious at the fan event as Jags fans showed up and told me all about their team. I was born in Jacksonville. Uh, my dad was Navy, I'm Navy. And uh, I remember whenever he was touring uh, Mark Burnell around NAS Jacksonville and he, uh, he actually got like a little football signed for me by uh, Mark Burnell. And I got fortunate enough to get stationed here in the Navy and come back and watch this team through, you know, ups and downs. Got to be here for the, the uh, Chargers playoff game. It was the most electric I've ever seen the bank. Now, of course, there was still the punishment that needed to happen. A huge shout out to Jenny, who was able to procure an outfit. And oh boy, was it an outfit. It seems a little small. I walked through the lobby of our hotel, got an Uber, and headed to the fan event. Yes, it was hot. Yes, the tights were also see-through. But I had done it. I did my embarrassing punishment, fulfilling my duty. Or so I thought. You see, my punishment was far from over. The Jumbo Shrimp, the minor league baseball team in Jacksonville, reached out and asked if I wanted to throw out the first pitch in this outfit. Now, I hadn't thrown a baseball in a while, and these fans had absolutely no idea who I was. So, of course, I said yes. I walked to the mound, totally wasn't nervous, got set, and threw. It wasn't the prettiest throw, but it got there. It didn't hit the ground, and the catcher caught it. So, take that, Travis Kelsey. I was triumphant. The crowd went mild, and it was just another amazing experience on a wild journey. Well, after my perfect strike, which went right over the middle, the Jumbo Shrimp said, hey, Tom, why don't you be our starting pitcher? And I said, thanks, Jumbo Strip, but I'm on a mission. See you later. After editing and getting that night's video out, we ended the evening on a bit of a different note. Johnny and I usually work around 15 hour days on this trip, but this was no ordinary evening. This was the eve of Johnny's birthday and Johnny wanted to ride scooters. About an hour away from Johnny Parks' birthday. He wants to ride a scooter. We're riding a damn scooter. So ride scooters we did. Johnny, John, John! <laughs> we ended the evening celebrating his birthday, went out to a local spot, and had a rare night of normalcy for the first time in weeks. Jacksonville had given me so many amazing experiences, whether it was meeting Jackson DeVille, the fans, throwing out the first pitch, or even seeing Daly's place, home of AEW, Bay Bay. Like the Jaguars, it was a new era for Jacksonville, an exciting future for the fans, stadium, and team. And while there were dark times, just like the Floridian weather, the dark clouds eventually subside and the sun shines again. Hey, Jacksonville! Two! Two. A reminder that there are two ways to donate to St. Jude, either on every video through the donate button on YouTube or in the link in the description. Both go to the same place. I appreciate you all. There once was a ship that put to sea, and the name of the ship was the Bully Hutty. The winds blew hard, her bow dipped down, oh blow me, Billy Boys, blow.